Hey guys, uh, Super Sangu here, just with a short video uh, showing you how I started my most recent uh, Siege campaign. Um, now this is a strategy that I recommend you can use to quickly take out Nang to take Nangao uh, on turn six, and then to take out Miao Ying altogether on about turn twelve. Uh, so saving some of the uh, headaches that you might have trying to fight sort of stacks of troops inside gate settlements and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and sort of taking yourself away from kind of any scrapping that you might be doing up here with other Chaos Factions and actually focusing straight away on your, anti your, you know, your campaign antagonists before they even manage to get strong. Uh, so what I've done to begin with is I have uh, fought the initial battle there. You can also resolve that. Um, I recommend you don't. You fight it manually just so you take no casualties at all. So we completed this quest to get the Grimoires. That's important. Um, so what we're going to do is we are just going to see... Uh, I think I know where this is anyway because I did this earlier today. Um, but I we, we are essentially making a beeline for Grand Cathay. So yeah, so it's about, it's about there, isn't it? Um, so we want to just come and stand at the edge of our province so that we can recruit. Um, and you can do this without a turn's recruitment, but the battles will be... There's going to be far less room for error. Um, it is possible uh, with, with the starting army that you've got to actually win without doing any, any recruitment. But if you do recruit for a turn, then the timing of how Cathay's armies here behave seems to line up quite nicely with when you arrive and when you're ready uh, to actually take Nango out. So, you know, you might have a tweak. There might be one or two things that you'd, uh, you'd tweak for trying this yourself. But I'm going to recruit one unit of Blue Horrors and one Chaos Furies. Chaos Furies in the early game, um, very useful if you do end up doing war, you know, fights against walled settlements. They're good for taking out missiles and that kind of thing. So we're going to do that. We are quickly going to start some research. I chose to start the cooldown redu reduction for siege spells. Uh, you may want to do something slightly different. There's several good options there. Um, in terms of diplomacy, we're just going to get friendly with this chap next to us. Uh, so this Kaze, it's him, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So we are going to take non-aggression and military access for one gold. Uh, big spender there. Um, and that is pretty much it for turn one. So, oh yeah, no, the, the settlement. Yeah, okay, so what I recommend you do here is demolish this building. Uh, we can't demolish it this turn because our recruitment won't get done, will it? What, what comes from here? We will get the Furies, we won't get the Blue Horrors. Um, so yeah, so what we're going to do is we're just going to throw in a hidden library. That gives us Grimoire's research rates. Um, we are going to hang on to the Volary, uh, we're going to stick walls on it and then basically forget about it and just let it, you know, passively gather us a little bit of income and some grimoires and stuff. Uh, so that's it, so we're going to move on. I don't think we need to do anything, yeah, we don't need to do any anything with these. So that's turn one done. Okay, so we've got some more grimoires there, putting us to 355. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this settlement so we get the iridescent horror um so we're going to use the changing of the ways to transfer this settlement bloodwing keep to ourselves just shy of the amount of grimoires we've got has joined your... we're not going to touch this settlement at all because effectively what we're going to do is uh we're going to use this to get us a bit of income but we're not going to invest in it and then eventually when when um when the coordinate faction to our uh, west there comes to attack because they will probably go for bloodwing keep um, then we're going to sell it back to this guy. Uh, so all there is to do now is to get, um, if we just give any any order to move into uh, Grand Cafe. And we're going to get this agent here to follow us. He's not going to embed into the army until we're actually taking Nangao. So again, just the shortest route for him to get in there. And yeah, so changing the way it's done, you don't need to touch the Winds of Magic manipulation mechanic at all. Like, uh, you can turn it down or you can turn it up, but we don't need to do anything with that. Uh, building up raid available, right, let's see. So now we can demolish this. We're going to stick walls on that and just to, uh, yeah, to make it more likely that we'll actually hang on to that. Because later on, once we're in, once we're done in Cafe, you can always come back, either using your changing of the ways or whatever, to uh, to complete this province and uh, yeah, expand expand northwards and use this as a staging ground then to uh, to push up into further into the chaos wastes. Uh, so that's all we need to do this turn. Um, again, it's entirely up to you what you want to do. You might want to stick the grimoires one per turn in here. I mean, it's only a thousand gold. It's it's entirely up to you. Um, I didn't, and it worked out. Things worked out quite well for me. But I'm not saying that there there aren't you know there isn't the odd tweak you can make to the strategy here. Uh, this is just a short video, just to just to explain. 
uh, what I think is a, is a pretty cool strategy for starting uh, for starting this campaign off. Okay, Sulfurial's Watchers are sticking an outpost in there. That seems to be fairly common that they'll do that at some point. So, Hidden Library is complete. Right, all we're going to do is build uh, the Demonic Lurkers here, which adds a bit more to our garrison. Um, and then, yeah, right, let these guys make their moves. And then next turn, we'll actually adjust that movement order. So, uh, yeah, right, so that's turn three. Hopefully our agent, nobody's going to run into anything that is going to actually stop them, uh, sort of halt their move. Yeah, we've encountered them now, we can see them here. We can see Cathay's armies actually in Nangao. And what she's doing is um, Miao Ying is filling up her own army and then starting to fill up a secondary army next to it. We're getting to Nangao before that second army gets too strong. Um, so what we're going to do this turn is I'm going to move him in here just so that we can see them again. So you see they haven't started putting anything into this army yet. Um, you can check the movement just uh, if you don't trust me. But yeah, so I'm, I'm certain that they can't reach me to attack in a normal move. So we're going to move to about here with our army. A bit towards our ally here. Who, um, as an aside, seems to be fairly useless. <laughs> he doesn't seem to contribute much to uh, to our success overall. Um, but yeah. So nothing to do here, right? We move on again. So this is where there's this is the, it's only taken a few minutes to get to this point, but this is where there is an element of um, yeah. On the next end turn, there is an element of RNG, uh, just in that we don't want her to detect us because we're going to go into ambush stance. Um, so, you can use this guy purely to get a skill up while he's not getting any experience. You can use this guy to assault the settlement or assault her. Um, because we're going to want to embed him next turn. So I am going to watch him get wounded now. But I'm just going to assault the settlement just for a skill up and just so he's in the right place. Oh, no, he runs into that army and then you can reissue that. Okay, succeeded there. Nice. Right. So we want to make sure that we can attack Nangao next turn. Um, but obviously conceal our presence for now and like I say this is where there is an element of uh, RNG so we and where can we go so we want to be in ambush stance I actually feel like I've moved further than I did in the other no 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 see this is fine okay yeah so just on the very edge I think about 27% there about here should be fine yeah so we want her to go and settle snake gate without seeing me I've I've messed this up. No, I haven't. No, that's fine. Yeah, we're going to ambush stance here. Sorry, there we go. I've got every faith in myself. Um, so if you're, you know, I haven't calculated the distance to actually get to Nangao in a single move. So, you know, if you're feeling a bit less comfortable about this, you might want to go into ambush about here. And I think it still works. I think on my stream today, I think I went into ambush about here and I was still able to make the attack. But yeah, um, Right, let's give this guy just a little... Um, he can just get... Yeah, whatever, just get a point in there, that's fine. So, there's nothing to do back here. So, really, like I say, hopefully she's going to go and settle the gate, and then, boom, we are there. Um, right, so let's just, uh, let's just... Let's just move along. Yep, she's done exactly what we wanted her to do. She's settled Snake Gate. This guy has only done one turn's worth of recruitment. So it's turn six. So the way we're going to do this upcoming fight, and this comes down to preference as well, uh, but the way I did it today and the way I found uh, more comfortable doing it is uh, we are going to attack this guy. So we're going to just take the shortest route there. We're going to move to about here. We're going to re-embed uh, Corvum. We're going to put this guy back into our army. Um, and then we're going to make the attack, and that's going to be so. And that's going to be it. So we're going to take Nangao on turn six. So I'm not going to play through the rest of the turns. If you wish to see this battle itself, um, and you wish to see the subsequent turns, I recommend you check the VOD for my most recent uh, campaign that I'm streaming on Twitch. So I am Super Sango on Twitch, and the VOD is also up on my YouTube channel. So I'll provide a link to that in the description to this video. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to fight this guy. Uh, fight him as the main force and the garrison's going to come in as reinforcements. Um, it is a bit of a tricky fight, so this might not be something for a beginner. 
Um, but yeah, you're going to use, you're going to be re heavily reliant on uh, Kairos's magic. On um, your burning chariot has a role to play. Um, your soul grind is pretty important. We're going to use the furies for um, finishing off any missile units that get low health. Um, and then we're going to actually uh, launch an ambush later on during the battle with the uh, with the pink horrors uh, and the blue horrors and just hide them for the beginning of the fight along with the iridescent horror. So you're going to do that and then once you've taken Nangao, um, Miao Ying, as far as I've seen and I've tried this successfully twice, Miao Ying is just going to be a bit confused and sit in Snake Gate um, and raise another Lord there. So what i did after i think what i did next was um once i'd done a bit of recruitment i did two turns worth of recruitment i stocked up on some blue horrors and a couple more furies um including filling up the global tree and getting two turns worth of local recruitment so by turn eight i think it was um then i moved out uh here and went into ambush stance meow ying will then come along and raid you um and then I think I might have stayed in ambush stance for a second turn, let her go and besiege Nangao, and then we went in to fight her with the garrison support. And then once her army's dealt with it, you've just got the, you've just got the matter of um, finishing off the small army that is uh, is at Snake Gate, and then taking the gate itself. And then I think I finished it off on turn 12. You could do it a bit more quickly if you chose not to bring the garrison into the fight with Miao Ying. Um, but yeah, turn 12, Miao Ying is gone. The other thing that I did was where we find a settlement i think it was this one i brought somebody i used changing of the ways the next time it's up so i think it's turn 11 um and i used um changing of the ways to flip this settlement to i actually brought in the siege faction up here but this is down to your preference and uh, how much it costs and who's available um so you can have some fun with siege mechanics for sure and then once I've dealt with Miao Ying, um, we will then focus on taking, completing this province here. And then from there, what I recommend you do is you actually work your way along, go for Pao Mei, and then work along and go for Wei Jin. And essentially secure as much of the top of uh, Cafe as you can. Um, if you wish to actually take part in the in the race for the souls, as in getting a soul on the first, uh, on the first portals, um, then that's up to you. Um, but what you may want to do is just quickly dip into the Slaneshi realm to get a buff from there and then come back out just so that you can make sure that you've cleaned up as much of Cafe as possible. And then once Cafe is mostly secure, including going down here and taking out uh, Xiao Ming, then you can uh, go in on turn 60, turn 90, turn 120 and turn 150 if you're, if you're, if you're lucky and uh, nobody has completed the Souls race by then. Um, so there guys, so just a short video like I say. So I hope um, I hope that this has been of some use to you. Um, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel for more uh, videos like this with campaign guides and mechanic guides. And as I say, my name is Super Sangu. I stream Total War Warhammer 3 on Twitch and I upload my VODs to my YouTube channel. Uh, so take care guys, that's all for this one and uh, see you next time.